today in crypto marketing. Steve Wozniak is suing YouTube. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Crypto Marketing Insights. Um, yeah, it's obviously not new news. Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple, is suing YouTube for allowing scammers to use his likeness to promote uh, doubling scams and other kind of known crypto scams and things of that nature right on their YouTube channel platform, their advertising platform. They allow ads to run on channels that are basically hijacked, taken over by hackers, and then they run an ad using a video that they put up on that channel. It's a very known scam technique. Even when they don't use a hack channel, it's still a similar technique. This actually bodes well for crypto marketing because we want to get these scams exposed. We want to get um, people who are known quantities like Steve Wozniak, who has be it some measure of oomph in Silicon Valley, but he's not using his connections, for example, to complain to YouTube. He's using the usual route that average people have, you know, available to them. And he's showing, you know, the hypocrisy and the difficulty of trying to get his own name. And he's an obviously well-known person. Um, if he can't get his name, some assistance from the YouTube team to prevent people from using his likeness, what are the odds that anyone else can do anything about it, right? And that's kind of the point, I think, of his suit, more than obviously the financial issue. It's not a money issue for him. He has all the money you know, he could ever want, I guess. Maybe not, but you know, he has a lot. He's not. He's clearly not doing this for just money, it's obvious. Um, and if he would, he, he would have you know, done things quite differently, to be perfectly honest. Um, but he didn't. He's showing that, you know, this is about protecting people's rights to their own likeness. Please hang up and try again. Doesn't matter how big your ad platform is, you don't get to let your advertisers abuse someone's likeness, right? Using it for nefarious reasons, right? Because that is a violation of their person. It may be a digital image and video of their person, but it's still of them. So people have a right to not have their image and likeness be used in ways they don't approve of. And that's a big deal for crypto marketing, like I said. If if Steve Wozniak wins this case, right, that's actually a very good deal for the marketing community because we don't want people like these scammers on YouTube being able to exploit these little loopholes just because the platform has the excuse of hiding behind whatever, you know, policy or whatever legalese they want to use um, and again i understand where google's coming from they're doing what they think is in their business interest but sometimes it takes a court case to show you that's not really in your business interest so i'm sure this video will get muted like all the others and that's fine you know <laughs> i share marketing insights here so obviously platforms like youtube don't always want certain things to be aired but Hey, that's okay. This channel is for the real marketing wonks out there. If you're into this, uh, you know, well done. <laughs> Chapeau. Putting this information out there, uh, the story of Steve Wozniak on YouTube, well-known story. Uh, but when you look at the nitty-gritty of why that is the case, right, follow the money, you see that the algorithms are able to handle converting the advertisers that they currently have, you know, from the advertisers that they had before, all the rosters got thinner and the scammers appeared in greater numbers. And this is one of the many flaws of letting the computers do your value judgments, right? More than actually having human interference to see whether or not the ads running on your network meet your ethical guidelines, right? Because clearly running a video conference of Vitalik Buterin or Steve Wozniak or anybody else in the crypto space and using that video blatantly to promote a doubling scam is something that these algorithms can obviously handle and block from happening. So why don't they do it? Well, for the simple reason that 
business is business, Google is a business, they're in business to make more money, right? And as long as it's legal, and as long as it isn't evil, well, actually, no, <laughs> they don't care about that anymore. But as long as it's legal, <laughs> as far as they're concerned, they can you know, deem it to be doable, apparently. Um, morals and ethics have little or nothing to do with it at this point. Uh, and they don't pretend otherwise. I mean, why, why do you think they got rid of the slogan, do no evil, or don't be evil? Right? When they got rid of that, they were basically saying, yeah, uh, we, you know, we're, we're a practical company, we live in the real world, and we're going to do things that some people are going to think are evil no matter what happens, because there's such a huge public utility at this point, practically speaking. Right? Um, they may call themselves just a company, but they're not, obviously. Right? They're much more than just a company. They control so much of the access of the online world for most people. Right? So, um, yeah, so they have a bit more of responsibility, in my view, than just any old company that only affects a small number of customers relative to the size of the world. Whereas Google affects a third of the world. Is that not enough to be considered basically a very basic utility? I think it is, right? A third of the world uses anything. That thing is automatically considered some kind of basic utility or commodity or whatever because it's such a massive number of people right, that it's obviously being used normally in day-to-day -day life. So it is not an exception to the rule to say that Google should change its ways regarding its advertisers. It's the rule because they are so predominant. Right? The rule is that they should not allow unethical ads. The rule is that they should not allow immoral use of existing content to promote scams and crimes, right? Fraud is a crime. Scamming is a crime um, in many jurisdictions, right? Especially those where YouTube appears uncensored, right? We know it's censored, but, um, you know, running fraudulent ads promoting crypto scams is a crime, and it is YouTube's responsibility to make sure that their platform is not used to promote crime, right? I know a lot of people avoid using that word, especially in business videos, but I don't, because that's what we're talking about here. Ultimately, Google is just a company run by people. People commit crimes, right? It's not the robots that are committing the crimes. It's the people that program them, and the people that manage those programmers, and the people that oversee those managers, and the executives in the boardroom, and the people who own all the shares that are the major shareholders of the corporation. Those are the people committing the crimes, right? And I'm not saying that Google is committing a crime, but if corporations do allow criminal activity on their platform, Ultimately, they do bear some responsibility for it. If you don't believe me, look at the Silk Road. The Silk Road, for those of you who don't know, and I suppose anybody watching this video would know, but for those of you who might be new to this channel or new to this video, well, hello there. The Silk Road was a marketplace on the dark web right, that anybody could go online onto the website and buy or sell products and services, many of which are perfectly legal, some of which, or many of which, were illegal in many jurisdictions, right? But the point of it was that it enabled peer-to-peer -peer electronic commerce directly. And by the way, you could use Bitcoin to pay for these goods and services. And at the time, a lot of people foolishly thought that Bitcoin was pseudonymous or anonymous in some way that was enough to protect them, even if they bought the coin through some trackable means. Well, no, Bitcoin is not at all private. If you, especially if you buy it through, you know, an exchange where they have your name on file and everything else, uh, every transaction with Bitcoin is recorded. It's a public, digital, distributed ledger technology. That's what the blockchain is. That's what Bitcoin is. People buying on the Silk Road have their, you know, a lot of their information is fully exposed. But the point of the marketplace was, again, to enable peer-to-peer -peer commerce without a middleman, without anybody able to tell you you can't do this because it enabled Bitcoin payments. So as long as people were buying and selling things discreetly 
and without trackable information, actually their purchases were fairly untrackable because yeah, you might know which wallets moved money from one place to another, but if you know nothing about those identities, then you would know, you know nothing about them. You know, people could have had goods shipped to a fake address and all these other things and received those goods, gone and picked them up and you know it's not their address so there's no way to find them. Many transactions like that obviously happened. The majority of them, you, I would even say, uh, were basically, you know, untrackable despite what you see in the reports. Yes, of course, we know where the money moved through, but it doesn't tell you exactly to where. Right. But it did tell you, it did tell the federal authorities enough information about uh, who was moving what because the bigger wallets were known and certain addresses were exposed. Uh, so they were able to track an enormous amount of commerce that had happened on Silk Road because, again, Bitcoin is a public ledger, so they could see everything. They just didn't necessarily know every name of every person. Still, they had a huge amount of forensic data. And they went after that site and they shut it down, right? So if you think that any site is not vulnerable to being shut down uh, just because it's an, you know, an online P2P bazaar, well, think again, as long as it's within the sovereign jurisdiction of any nation, that nation, as long as it maintains a steady arsenal of weapons uh, and the, the biggest guns in the land, so to speak, any nation can shut down anything within its borders, right? Now, they may not be able to shut down full access to an open source website that's decentralized on the web around the world, but they can shut it down within their borders. They may not be able to block access to it for everyone who uses a VPN, etc., but again, they can block what is within their borders, right? Um, and if a country wanted to go to extremes, they could obviously they could obviously block things like uh, VPNs and other things uh, by putting in extremely draconian restrictive play, you know, restrictions on technology. These things happen. If you don't believe me, look at North Korea, right? Um, North Korea has its own intranet or internet that is entirely developed by their authority, right? Their government, um, completely controlled content is a completely walled garden so to speak the average person does not have you know internet access real internet access what they have on their phones uh, for those who can afford it are access to the north korean internet which is its own thing by the way china right has its own internet it's like it's not you know you think okay north korea tiny little country pariah state nobody cares who's ever going to even see it it's a joke uh, okay maybe you think it's a joke although it's not China, right, has basically invented its own internet by walling off people's access to things like Google or Twitter, right, or YouTube, or Facebook, right. Of course, Chinese people use these things with VPNs and proxies and tunnels and whatnot, but most of them don't, right. Most of them use the Chinese version, Weibo, and all the different you know, Tencent and all these WeChat things that they you know, that they use. Uh, in China that are Chinese central party control, right? Uh, it's much easier for them. It's, it's built in Chinese. It's this default one encouraged by the states. It's the one that if you don't use counts against you, you know, if you or if you do certain things, they can measure you on there and they can give you points if you're a good boy and take away points if you're a bad boy, you know, like they have a social scoring in China and if you jaywalk in China and you literally will have your photo taken by a camera as you're jaywalking and will debit your electronic money account automatically and your face goes on a wall of shame right there on the square where you're walking across for some period of time right all electronically all computer driven all AI driven all data driven all miraculously computer driven all happening right now in China if you think that that's not the beginning of very dark possible uses for AI and deep learning and machine learning and all, you know, all that other kind of stuff, and this is exactly the kind of thing that people like Elon Musk have been warning about, you know, saying there will be dark uses of this technology. And ironically, he's building or he has built a huge fabrication plant in China, right, bringing massive amounts of value and revenue and business to that country, employing thousands of people. and you know, making a huge 
production facility in China, in the very country that's doing the things with AI that he has warned against. So kind of gives you an insight to his own, you know, grasp at wrestling these bigger questions of morality and ethics in business. Because how do you justify producing a product that's supposed to help the world uh, achieve better quality of life, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, if you know you're using resources, workers, labor in a place that's run by a government party that completely disregards human rights and how do you justify that just on profit? I mean, there are other places you could do business, right? So there are bigger questions there. Well, if you can't justify it on profit, can you justify it by saying if you bring a good thing to a bad place, does it inherently make the good thing a part of a bad thing or does it inherently improve the bad thing into a more of a good place even though it's still not good right that is another way to view this question and to each company they'll each have their own answer to that and that's fine but what's important is that they stick to their principles and not do what they know is the wrong thing right so tesla doesn't on purpose, I mean, maybe they do, I don't know, but from what it appears, right, they are doing what they think is the right thing, the good thing, right? So it appears, maybe I'm wrong, but that's the appearance they give. They have an effective marketing of that particular corporate communication message and those kind of corporate values, right? That's how they're perceived, right or wrong, time will tell. So again, it bodes well for marketing. If people who are aware of their image and the right to their likeness being used, especially if they have a high profile. It bodes well for marketing if those kind of people like Steve Wozniak and hopefully others will also do the same if Google does not relent. Hopefully this will lead to an outcome where people's likenesses are more protected and scammers are less effective online. Of course, the reality is the scammers will just make another channel and upload another video somewhere and then you gotta go hunt them down again, right? until the algorithms are changed to prevent it or until there's some human interference with the process. But again, as long as Google thinks that computers are better than people at solving these problems at scale uh, and they refuse to insert more quality control at a human level, which is ultimately the best control that we have because people can make those decisions that computers cannot yet finesse, right? Yes, they can do 99% of the work, but then humans have to do, well, maybe it's even less than 1% of the work at this point, but they have to do some percentage to make sure that issues with little flags are sorted properly. And I believe that that's, uh, you know, we're not yet at the space where computers can do it all. Maybe we will be someday, maybe even soon. Maybe it'll even slow down our time to get there by having humans delaying that process because of our human incapacity but it still would be a better result for people day to day between here and the time computers are better, right? To have humans part of that process, especially while such a huge number of people are already relying on these technologies to give them these answers. So if you're knowingly give, giving people false information, you should be held accountable, right? That's my opinion and I hope that Steve Wozniak's case will show that to be the case that YouTube is responsible for having these kind of videos on their site and that ultimately Google, YouTube, you know, whatever alphabet, whatever corporation is named in the paperwork uh, should have to bear the responsibility from a, some kind of outcome of this legal process, whether that's a settlement, whether that's a verdict, whether that's a whatever, something's got to give. It's not okay that big brands, big names, big coins, big whatever are being exploited to promote bad things. I know that was a bit of a round loop on several different levels, but it's all kind of interconnected there. So, from a uh, marketing perspective, you know, there's a lot, a lot to digest there, obviously. I'd love to know what you guys think. Is AI good? For marketing is deep learning good for marketing but more importantly on the broader questions of right and wrong should companies and marketers really care about ethics and morality when they're marketing 
something or when they're allowing their technology like YouTube uh, being allowed by Google marketing executives to promote things that, are, that they know are false. It has been brought to their attention multiple times. They know it's false. The same URL, the same ad, the same everything. If their computers are so much smarter, how many times is enough to set off a trigger? If you're reporting it one, two, five times, a hundred times, a thousand times, how many times? Right? If their computers are so much smarter, why aren't they doing a better job of that? If their computers are, are, are so much smarter, why aren't there people verifying that? Just verify that the computers are doing a good job. They're not even doing that. Right? These are serious problems for a platform like YouTube. And again, I'm sure <laughs> you're probably the only person who will ever watch this video. <laughs> no one will share it, no one will like it, no one will comment it. I get it, you're all too afraid to do that. You, know, you don't have the balls, that's fine. Um, you, you're too scared to tell your friends you saw this video. I get it. You're chicken, not a problem. Do your thing. I don't fault you for that one bit. The monster which is this big brother called YouTube, is not kind to people who share this kind of information. Right? They will not reward you for that. They will in fact punish your social score. And if you think YouTube doesn't keep a social score on you, you're wrong. Right? They definitely do. Um, <laughs> they don't publicize it, but they definitely track your socials. They definitely put weight on your comments. If you have a bigger following or a bigger influence, etc., when you write something, more people will see it naturally. More people will engage with it naturally. More people will respond, like, share, comment, etc. The more you are popular in their little clickish games, the more they give you authority, even if you absolutely have none. You just are able to make noise, and people like your noise because, for whatever reason, right? So, it makes it incredibly easy for people like me who are marketers. Um, not with these kind of videos, obviously, because this kind of video of exposing, you know, things that are actually happening in marketing, uh, and they don't want you to know that. Um, not like a conspiracy, but literally, corporations have trade secrets. These are some of them. But it makes it incredibly easy for marketers like me to produce content and channels for businesses and clients all over the world who need to get their word out and have incredibly effective targeted messages. Why? Well, because we know that with even a ridiculous scam ad, I can reach millions of people. With a legit ad, you can reach tens and hundreds of millions of people with your message in geo-targeted locations, each with their own customized messaging. You can break it down by demographics, like age, gender, interests, hobbies, what they actually spend their time on. You can look at psychographic information, therefore you can build psychographic profiles of people so that you don't just know what they're interested in, you actually know what they're going to be interested in. And you can prepare something for them one-to-one, -one, right? Literally marketing with them, not at them and not to them. You are giving people what they want before they even know they want it. I mean, literally, that is the power of AI and machine learning and deep learning in information technology marketing, right? That, that is the power of marketing technology at the level we are at now with neural networks and advanced neural networks and sub-networks and everything else that interrelate and make the whole dynamic growth of AI and marketing technology ramp itself up at levels and in ways nobody ever imagined before. It's amazing what the doors of possibility are opening up for us just in the last several years, right? AI five years ago was still very futuristic for a lot of companies. It was still something too far away. Very few people even had anybody on board who understood this stuff. Now, just look at the phone in your hand, you know, this, these things have some remarkable amount of technology on them, right? They have tons of little apps that have AI driven software that tell some centralized being your name, your age, your location, your phone number, your, your heartbeat, whatever you're tracking, 
how many steps a day you take. And these applications are so powerful that they are now driving more data to their data centers right, than anybody thought would be at the scale that they're at by now. And the reason that is simple is what people like me and others who have been using advanced marketing technology or our agencies have or whatever, uh, especially those who've been using it for many years, uh, can tell you, you know, after one iteration, your machine, you know, is starting to learn things after a hundred iterations, it's starting to learn things, it's still learning things very basically after a few hundred iterations, it's learning things more advanced. By the time you get to 500 or a thousand iterations, you know, these machines are able to learn things at a rate that seems superhuman and they're able to do things even that they were never taught at a rate that is apparently superhuman. But again, those things can be used for good. And so I want to leave you with that little bit of optimism that marketing technology, using AI, using machine learning, using everything else can be for good. And companies like Google can use them for good, even with their advertising platform. They can use YouTube ads in a better way. They can target them better. They can block more bad actors from their pool, but they have to make a cognizant choice to do that, right? They have to, they have to choose to be honest and show videos like this to more people, right? That actually have an interest in the topic of what can Google do to show less scams? What can Google do to promote better advertisers? What can Google do to protect its consumers? What can YouTube do to protect its viewers, right? What can Google do to protect people from being exploited by known scammers? What can do Google do to protect anyone from being exploited on their platform by known or unknown scammers, right? What can do Google do to improve its computers to the point that they actually are as good as people? Because right now they're clearly not because humans would not allow these things to go through. And if they did, they would 100% be, I mean, way more responsible than they are. They're already responsible, in my opinion, because they do control the machines. But the actual human beings in charge, pushing the buttons of approve or do not approve, would be much more responsible. And obviously, they don't want that. Right? So those are some of the questions I would you know, pose to you as a viewer of this video. And again, if you're watching this, congrats. You made it to the end. You're a serious marketing wonk. I invite you to uh, follow me on Telegram or Twitter or wherever you want if you're into this kind of content or the, the subscribe button if you want. Um, obviously, feel free to like it and comment it and share it. Uh, again, I know you won't. Um, <laughs> and again, that's okay because you're not in a safe place <laughs> right now. Right? This channel is not good for your social profile. <laughs> if you're looking at this and you're saying nice things about it, it's generally not going to help you. Uh, so you don't have to, and that's fine. Maybe that no one will ever see this. That has happened with many of my videos on this channel. Right? So they delete quite a bit of them um, <laughs> or hide them or whatever. So thanks again for watching if you are one of the people that does. And uh, I wish you well. I hope you learned something from this. And until next time, folks, take care.